When it comes to bike locks, then the recommendation is always the bigger the better, which you know is most of the times correct. But big locks are always heavier and not that easy to carry around. And since my garage alarm system, which I showed you how to build in a previous video, recently confirmed that burglars do not like loud noises, I got the idea to create a DIY alarm bike lock that generates a high-pitched sound when it is being moved around without permission. Now granted, this idea is certainly not new, but my design will not only be small, lightweight and can run in standby mode for months, but it can also easily be homemade, if you got a couple of simple electronics components and a 3D printer. So let's not waste any more time and let me show you how I designed my own alarm bike lock. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can order PCBs as well as the fitting SMT assembly service. The SMT assembly is as quick as 24 hours and you can try it out for free twice a month during the JLC PCB's SMT assembly months. So save money and time for your projects and try out their service today. Let's start off theoretical with the three most important questions about my bike lock. How to power it, how can I detect shocks and how can I create a loud high pitched noise. For the power I went with this rather small 1200 mAh LiPo battery, which I soldered to this TP4056 charge and protect board, which like the name implies can not only charge up the LiPo battery, but also protects it from overcurrent, overcharge and over discharge. Now our battery can deliver us a voltage range between 4.2 volts and around 3.5 volts, which means our main electronics need to work with 3.3 volts, because stepping up a voltage would require too much standby current. And just like that the power question was answered and I moved on to the output question for which I used eBay in order to search for a 3.3V buzzer, which I quickly found. After receiving it, I powered it with a 3.3V power source and quickly realized that it might not be the loudest sound, but definitely annoying enough for this project. And that basically leaves us with the input sensor question, for which I got myself such a piezoelectric disc. After soldering two wires to its two plates and connecting them to the oscilloscope, we can see that the disc does create a recognizable voltage when it is being hit, which we can obviously use to detect shocks. But the achieved voltage levels are quite low so far, which is why we need such a differential amplifier circuit in order to amplify the voltage by a factor of 34. And while I'm building up this amplifier on a breadboard, let me tell you that this circuit might look familiar to you, since I used it the exact same way in a previous project video, in which I created a GPS SMS security tracking system. But anyway, as soon as the amp was done, I hooked up my oscilloscope in order to verify that the circuit truly amplified the piezo voltage. Which it did. With that being done, we have the entire starter questions answered, but what about the brain of the system? Of course, we could use an Arduino for that, which can react to the amplified piezo voltage and therefore activate the buzzer, and maybe even have a timer and or reset button to then turn off the buzzer. But since using a microcontroller for such a task would be a bit of an overkill, I instead used an op amp as a comparator, a D-type flip-flop, a logic level MOSFET and a couple of extra passive components in order to create this schematic. At first the LP2950 3.3V regulator creates a stable 3.3V for all ICs and reference voltages. 
Like already discussed, does the first op-amp stage amplify the piezoelectric disc voltage? The second op-amp stage, however, acts as a comparator. That means we can adjust a voltage threshold with the trimmer on the inverting inputs, and as soon as the piezo voltage is higher than the threshold voltage, the output of the comparator gets pulled up to 3.3 volts. After building up the comparator on the breadboard, we can see that the just described action works and looks like this on the oscilloscope. Now the output of the comparator connects to the set pin of the D-type flip-flop, which if it gets pulled to 3.3 volts, activates its output Q, which turns on the logic level MOSFET and thus the buzzer. After building up the circuit to this point, you can see that by hitting the piezoelectric disc, our buzzer starts screaming and does not want to stop, because the D-type flip-flop will keep its output turned on unless we connect its reset pin to 3.3 volts. To achieve that, I added a pull-down resistor in combination with a tactile push button to the reset pin, which as you can see seems to deactivate the buzzer without any problems. At this point we could call it a day and use the circuit like this, but let's imagine your bike gets hit by wind or something similar and the circuit will just keep buzzing until the battery is empty. That is why I added an RC circuit to the second stage of the D-type flip-flop and connected the inverted output of the first stage to the reset of the second stage and the capacitor voltage to the reset of the first stage. This way, after building up the circuit on the breadboard, the capacitor does charge up while the buzzer is screaming and after around 6 seconds reaches the reset threshold value, which turns off the first stage and thus also resets the second stage, which then discharges the capacitor. And with this simple timer being integrated, my alarm by clock circuits was basically complete and only seems to draw around 370 microamps from the 1200 mAh battery. That means it theoretically can run a total of 135 days. To permanently turn it off though, I also added a slight switch to the circuit. At this point I removed all of the components from the breadboard and started soldering them to one another on a piece of perfboard. In order to keep it all as small as possible, I also utilized some rather tiny SMD capacitors. And after around 1 hour of soldering, my perfboard circuit was basically complete. But as you might already have noticed, a couple of components were not directly attached onto it. I actually created a specific place for each of them in my Fusion 360 designed housing. So after 3D printing it with some PLA filament, it was time to attach the external components inside the housing with mostly hot glue, solder them to the circuits, close it all up and mount my new bike lock around the seat post with the help of M3 screws and nuts. And just like that, my DIY alarm bike lock was complete. And I hope that you might consider giving such a project a try, because it can teach you quite a lot about basic electronics. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!